Well, hello, this is Stefan here, and welcome to this uh, new episode about uh, electronic filters. Friends of mine asked me if I could do an introduction into electronic filters, and uh, sure do. Um, I'm not um, getting in too much into the math behind it, a little bit, so much what's necessary to understand the whole thing, but it's more an overall introduction in different type of filters. Um, we take a closer look at analog filters. This video is already taken and up on the on the channel. I already made a video about crystal filters that's up and running. I will record a separate video about active filters and I record a separate video about digital filters. And we can also take a look at fast Fourier transformation, which is kind of um, a topic which relates somewhat uh, to filters. Okay, let's jump into it, into this introduction of electronic filters. A filter is nothing else but uh, a system, electronic system that's capable of, of uh, extracting certain frequencies out of um, a given input signal. A given input signal can always be decomposed uh, into certain frequencies. Fourier, a mathematician, showed that uh, every signal can be constructed by a series of sines and cosines of different frequencies and different amplitudes. And of course a filter is nothing else but looking for these frequency components that are in a given electronic input signal and select the ones that's, that we are interested in and attenuates the ones that we are not interested in. So a low pass filter looks at the lower frequencies. It passes the low frequencies and it blocks the higher frequencies, a high pass filter the other way around. A band pass filter is selecting certain frequency range within the signal and within the frequency spectrum. And a notch filter is just the opposite. It, a notch filter just passes everything except a certain frequency range. So very basic. Um, what we look at is the response curve of a filter. It is defined by output voltage to input voltage. That's also called the transfer function. And it's typically, the attenuation is typically measured in decibel, in dB. What you have to define when you design a filter you have to know what corner frequency you would like to have and also at what kind of um, attenuation you try to achieve in the stop band. So that's this FS frequency, this stop band frequency here. The same that's true for low pass and high pass. And the corner frequency is always defined at minus 3 dB attenuation minus 3 dB, that's the output voltage divided by square root of 2, so output voltage times 0 0.707. And this is um, actually half the power um, if you don't look at voltages, if you look at your filter in, in, in regards of power. So in, in bandpass, you don't have a, um, a stop band frequency you have a F1 and F2, a lower and a higher stop band a corner frequency, and you define your desired attenuation at these, these two may, uh, minus three dB points, and similar the notch filter. The simplest, the simplest uh, um, low pass uh, filter that we all know is this RC filter, an RC filter, um, is nothing else but a voltage divider. You know, it is R1 and R2, and then we di divide the voltage, and you have this typical voltage divider formula. And if you write it instead of R, if you take Z, Z as impedance, and impedance one and impedance two, the output voltage is the impedance two over impedance one plus impedance two, the sum of both times the input voltage. And since this is uh, a complex impedance, this capacitor, it 
uh, the impedance of a capacitor we, we know it's one divided by two f c and we just uh, uh, calculate the transfer function out to in z2 divided by z1 plus z2 is nothing else but 1 plus divided to 1 plus 1 j omega rc so the cut off frequency that's by definition 1 divided by a square root of 2 that's a definition we we, we made and so we can uh, calculate the corner frequency as in an rc circuit as something of 1 divided by 2 pi rc and the phase is turning to 45 degrees at the corner frequency and at higher frequency it's then at 90 degrees so that's the simplest rc circuit it's also called a first order low pass and uh, a first order low, low pass filter is as we said defined by this corner frequency fc there it starts to roll off there it has a minus 3 db point or and and or as at the same time 45 degrees phase shift and then it drops the signal gets attenuated with 20 db per decade that's the stop band behavior and that's a first order rc if you have a second order filter you have 40 dBs, if you have a third order filter, you have 60 dBs per decade in case of low pass filters and high pass filters. And that's uh, the steeper your specification gets, the higher order you filter you have to take. Often you see also a definition of minus 6 dB per octave. An octave, an octave is uh, doubling the frequency. And uh, a decade is uh, 10 times the frequency and uh, in an octave is 3.332 times uh, in a decade to 2x is equal to 10. So that's the same thing. S minus 6 dB per octave is, octave is exactly the same thing as minus 20 dB per decade. And typically filters we look in a, a boat plot and the boat plot is, is nothing else but the attenuation over the frequency and um, we usually use uh, a single logarithmic scale this is a linear scale and the frequency is on a logarithmic scale and so you can uh, better understand you better see this minus 20 db per decade that's this slope here if you do this uh, linear and linear scaled um, you have uh, difficulties with resolution. Low pass filter with just one inductance or one capacitance are first order filters. If you use capaci a capacitance and an inductance, um, you already have a second order filter. And we know that first order filters roll off with 20 dB per decade, second order filters with 40 dB per decade. And the higher you go in order, the steeper your filter characteristics gets. One could have the idea to say, okay, a fourth order filter would be just four RC circuits in series. And that's actually true because the minimum number of reactive components required um, gives you the filter order. But uh, in practical, you never build a filter like this because you have so much attenuation because every RC filter is loading the filter before. And if you have a certain impedance here, this resistor and this capacitor, and to not to load this first stage too much, you go higher in impedance here, you, you have kilo ohms and then you have mega ohms. You have um, maybe nanofarads and you go into the picofarads and uh, this gets uh, more and more worse and at a certain point of time you it's not practical anymore and you have to load and you will load your rc uh, stages before and this is giving you a completely different corner frequency that's certainly not the corner frequency of one rc this is a much lower corner frequency we we'll take a look at that in a second um, 
if you when you start doing the math on on this and you look for the the corner frequency what you find is so-called a natural frequency this is not the corner frequency natural frequency is one divided by two pi r1 r2 c1 c2 you remember just one rc is one divided by two pi square root r1 c1 and this is not the minus 3 dB cutoff frequency. This is a so-called natural frequency. That's the, the natural resonance frequency of this uh, electronic uh, circuit. But as, uh, as already uh, mentioned, you start loading the first stage and you have a different cutoff frequency, um, not at this FN. So don't get confused. Sometimes you see this... Uh, uh, called uh, corner frequency, this is not true. I made a quick um, simulation with LT Spice. What you see here is an RC, one stage, and then you have a second order RC RC circuit with the same input um, signal. The green, the green curve is uh, the the boat plot, the attenuation of um, the first filter RC. And the blue line here is the, the output uh, signal of the second filter. And we see 3 dB point of the first RC and then we see the corner frequency of 720 Hertz with 470, uh, 4.7 kilo ohms and uh, uh, 47 nanofarads. But the two stages together have not twice uh, minus 3 dB. You could think of, ah, oh, I have one uh, minus 3 dB for my first stage and I have another minus 3 dB for my second stage. So it should be minus 6. No, you're way below that. You're at minus 9 or more. And also the corner frequency, the minus 3 dB point of this uh, double RC, the second order RC filter is at 270 Hertz. So it's rose off um, way earlier than that. To eliminate this loading effect from one RC to the next RC, you could use buffer amplifiers in between. If you have a buffer amplifier, as you see here in the picture, between the first RC and the second RC stage, then the, the buffer amplifier is not loading the first RC and is providing a low impedance into the second RC stage and therefore you have uh, no loading and no shifting of your corner frequencies and you have nothing else but two RCs um, right one stage after the other without these loading effects. And of course you would also need to have a buffer on the outside so the output of the second stage is not going to be loaded with the input impedance of the following stages. And of course that's ugly. It's, these are two uh, op amp operational amplifiers that you need in your circuitry and a lot of overhead and a lot of work. And um, people came up with other topologies. And one of the most common used topology is the cell and key topology for active filters. So now we're moving from the passive filters into the active filter range. Beside the cell and key topology, there are all kind of different topologies. Another one that is well known for band passes is the multi-feedback topology you see often as well. And so that's pretty handy. You have a low output impedance. That's what we want because of the amplifier and you only need one amplifier. So we are here at the bench. We are looking at the simple RC circuit. You see the resistor and the capacitor. This is the input, this is ground, and this is the output. We probe the output with a scope and we power the input through our frequency generator up here. It generates a sweep frequency. It sweeps within 0.1 seconds. It sweeps from 100 hertz to 2000 hertz. And this uh, SIG chain is generating on the back a sync output. And whenever the sweep starts, we get a sync signal. You see that on the scope. We look at that then uh, in a second. Going back to the circuit, 
what we have, I measured it, what we have here is 4, 6, 8, 4 ohms for R1 and we have 39 nanofarad for C1 and this is giving us a corner frequency of 871 hertz and so let's take a look at the scope if we gonna see this so on the scope what you see is the rising edge at the rising edge of the sink output of the uh, signal generator we start triggering and we sweep all the way from 100 hertz to 2 kilohertz within 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 divisions, 10 times 10 milliseconds, 0.1 second, 100 milliseconds. And this is the linear sweep. If we sweep logarithmically, let me switch that quickly. This is a log sweep now, and this looks pretty much like a boat, boat plot. You have a, a flat uh, a response amplitude response and then you have somewhere here you have the 3 dB point and you start to attenuate with 20 dB per decade. Now let's measure this. Let's see um, where this uh, 20 dB, uh, 3 dB point really is. So I have to go back of course to linear sweep and then I use a cursor, a cursor measurement and what you see is the cursor one is at two volts. That's this cursor here. And the cursor two, that's this one here, is at 1.42 volts. That's two volts divided by square root of two. So that's the 3 dB point. And you see the 3 dB point is somewhere here. So that's one, two, three, four. It's pretty, pretty exactly at four divisions. We have uh, four divisions, that's 40 milliseconds. Sweep goes from 10 hertz. I'm sorry, that was 10 hertz, not 100 hertz. That's correct. From 10 hertz to two kilohertz in 100 milliseconds. So that gives us a corner frequency of 796 hertz, roughly, approximately. I mean, this is not exactly, uh, but uh, it's in the range. We calculated 871. So I think uh, that's fine. Now, what I would like to add is a second RC stage right after the, the first one. A second RC stage, something like this. You know, you have... You have a R1 and C1, and we just add another one, R2 and the C2, and see how the output voltage to the input voltage, how that relationship is. So I've added the second RC right after the first one, first RC, second RC, directly connected instead of measuring after the first one, I'm measuring now after the second one. And let's take a look at the scope, what the scope says. And you see it's significantly lower, the corner frequency. We had this 3 dB um, drop off at four divisions and we have it now at about one point. Eight divisions. So it shifted the 3D point down in frequency. What you see, however, is uh, that you have a much steeper roll off at higher frequencies. You have now um, 40 dB per decade, not only 20 dB per decade. What we can try now is put a buffer between the first RC and the second RC. So the second RC stage is not loading the first RC stage. And so I got a op amp ready here and we put an op amp as a buffer amplifier between the first and the second stage. So we added the buffer amplifier between, between the first RC stage to the second one. 
you see the first stage here RC the output of this goes into the input of the buffer amplifier non-inverting buffer uh, so gain is one and then the output of the amplifier you see the second RC R and C and we can measure we still have here the input this is the probe we can measure now the first stage we should see exactly this uh, same 3db point as before because this part here the second stage is not loading anymore and let's switch over to the um, oscilloscope and what you see here this is a linear sweep we see again at minus 3 dB this is 1.41 volts in this case we have exactly these four decades uh, these four um, divisions as we had before so that was the first stage I switch now over to the second stage so we add to the first stage another one without influencing the first one so we should expect twice as much uh, damping so at uh, four divisions we should have half the voltage let's see one two three four divisions and we are down at about one volt that's minus six db now because we have two um, rc stages right after each other without um, having them influence each other and of course if you would now load the um, the second rc here if you would put a, a higher load than just the, the probe the probe is one mega ohm if you have a load of 10 kilo ohm or even less then of course you would in influence and affect the the rc circuit here as well so you would have to have a second amplifier and then after that you could uh, securely continue to do your work yeah, but really we are getting now into uh, active filter designs and uh, I'm gonna make a, a separate uh, video about that, about these active filters and how you can uh, get use of this Allen Keat the topology which is uh, a two-pole filter with just one operational amplifier. We take a closer look at that then in another video. There is one thing left that we have to do in this introduction that's uh, a quick look at different filter characteristics and learn the basics uh, about that as well. And so let's quickly do that and then we move on. When you get into filter design of higher order filters, you have to decide what kind of filter characteristic your filter should have. A filter characteristic describes um, the, the pass band and the stop band behavior of your filter and they, these behaviors or these characteristics can be completely different depending on the method and the mathematics behind your, your filter designs. There are different mathematical approaches on how to calculate your components of your filter. For instance, here on the left side, you have a filter and on the right side with 3.9 megahertz roll off and 50 ohm input and output impedance. So in basically it's the same design. You have a C and an L and a C and an L for four poles. But on the left side, you have a Butterworth filter characteristic and on the right side you have a Chebyshev filter characteristics and you see the Chebyshev has some ripple in the passband but it has a higher and a steeper roll-off and the Butterworth has a perfect flat response on the passband and not such a steep roll-off in the pass in the stop band so it really depends on your application and what you're aiming for and where you can do what kind of compromises. The most common used uh, filter characteristics are Butterworth filters, Chebyshev filter and Bessel filters. But there are many more out there. There are elliptic filters and I don't know. Butterworth, the advantage is it has a perfect flat passband, 
but uh, it has some phase shift in the filter and so therefore if you have a step response like a square sign a square wave input and output you have some ringing get some ringing ringing response on the output so like JPJF, however uh, has a, a very good a better attenuation here in the passband but it has a ripple in the passband you see that here that's the green line so it ripples in the passband it also rings on uh, the step response and the bezel however has an excellent stop uh, excellent step response because the bezel filter is the only filter with it's not uh, shifting the faces so this is nice for high fidelity filters uh, uh, audio filters where you don't want to have a uh, because of your filter uh, face shifts but the passband is not so flat it uh, rolls off uh, lazy as we say and uh, sometimes uh, that's not that's not desired sometimes it's just not enough to describe your filter with both with a boat plot and with some scope analysis if you want to describe your filter more in detail if you want to describe what is going to happen to my signal that is uh, applied to a device on the test then you usually use these s parameters to describe um, this situation better s parameters can be applied and can be calculated um, for any four pole it can be a filter it can be an amplifier it can be active passive anything that has four poles two inputs two outputs um, with a port one and a port two any of uh, these four poles can be described through s parameters and there is a way to look forward into the measurement, the forward measurement, and you also describe the S parameters as a measure of reverse measurement. Typically, we use this forward measurement, and there are two uh, S parameters that we see all the time. That's this S11, that's a, a measure of reflection, something that you usually don't want. And you measure the S21, 21 is the forward voltage gain, the gain of your device on the test or the attenuation and negative gain. The return loss uh, is usually given uh, as a as a decibel number minus 20 log S11 in decibel and the VSWR the standing wave uh, ratio um, is, is nothing else but um, a measure of this S11 as well it's just another other way to express this return loss and you can also measure the reflection factor with which is the load uh, impedance minus the impedance the typical impedance of your your system and in rf uh, systems uh, it, we usually have 50 ohm as the system impedance so that's not desired you know we would like to have all forward power be transmitted through an antenna or be maximum uh, power be transferred into the next uh, stage after the transformer or into the next amplifier or whatever you have from one system power transfer from one from one electronic system into the next one you do not like this reflected um, these reflections and VSWR, you know, maybe already, a VSWR of 1 means 0% reflected power, which is nice. Already a VSWR of 2 is already 10% that's reflected. 10% reflection means uh, you have uh, power that is coming back and it is dissipating somewhere. It is generating heat and it's uh, just a loss. And not just that, it's also causing intermodulation and cross products in your mixers and all kind of other troubles um, you could imagine. So we do not want reflected power. We say a system is matched uh, when you have no reflection. And a matched signal also means that you have the maximum of power transfer from the source to the load. If you have a source with inner resistance, or in other words, with your system impedance, in our case, typically 50 ohm, 
And if you have a load which is also exactly 50 ohm, then you have no reflections. And you also at the same time transfer um, the maximum of power from the source to the load. And it's very easy to, to calculate. The power of the load is equal to the voltage at the input uh, divided by the total amount of resistance squared. That's the current in the system here times the load resistance. And if you take and make a quick an Excel and calculate that for different load resistances, you see that at 50 ohm you have a peak, a maximum, a maximum match, a maximum power transfer from the input to the output. And that's what we are looking for all the time. And a very nice instrument to measure these S parameters is a nano VNA. It's uh, for, I don't know where the prices are at the moment, $100, somewhere around that. You can measure the S21 and the S11 directly. And as long as you properly calculate your um, VNA before you start measuring, you have a pretty accurate and pretty nice instrument um, to qualify your filters and uh, also other um, electronic uh, systems.